A wonderful Sunday morning to everyone. How are you? Awake and ready? I need your complete attention because today I would like to take you to the highest level of God's presence. The theme of today, I don't know if you realized, is living in the presence of God, right? Did you hear that? Yes or no? There are, if you study the scriptures, the Indian scriptures, three levels of practicing the presence of God. The first level is the most common one that we, most of us know, also in Christian tradition, is that, for example, you go to church or to a spiritual room or into your meditation room, and then during the day, you keep within you your beloved Jesus, Heavenly Father, the Madonna in India, it would be maybe Krishna or Shiva, the Greek maybe Zeus, but you take this divine presence with you. This is the first level. Then there are saints described in the Indian scriptures who take a quantic step and then everything changes. You need to know that the base of this all, of the presence of God, is love. The bigger your love is, the closer is divi your divine presence, because God listens to love. In the first, second, and third level, there are people, saints, who feel such a love and such a deep love that they can do this quantic Uh, jump, jumping a level. And uh, I want to tell you a story of Namdev. Namadev means the angel, the one who repeats the name, Nam, of God. And this saint was a great devotee of God. And every day he went into the temple and worshipped God and his love was so intense that the Lord came and he appeared to him and spoke to him as speaking to a friend. It was a friendship, a very close friendship with God and for him it was completely normal talking to God like you talk to me, I talk to you. This was for him talking to God but one day something incredible happened. God said Dear Namdev, you haven't understood uh, one thing and I need to teach you this thing, but I can only teach you this through a guru. And Namdev says, but why? I, why do I need a guru? I have you, the Lord of the universe. I don't need any guru, I have you. And the Lord says, no. This one thing you can only understand through a guru and you will go and you will name a temple of Shiva or no, he, na he names the temple of Shiva and he says go there and you will meet an old man, a bit strange man but don't worry, that's your guru and he will teach you. And Namdev who is obedient to the Lord says okay I will go and he goes to that temple And he's horrified. This is a temple of Shiva. And he sees with his eyes a sacrilege. This man, this old man, putting his feet on the Shiva Lingam. I don't know if you know, but the Shiva Lingam is a symbol for the Lord Shiva. One of the most sacred things, worshipped things for thousands of years by all saints and masters, the Shiva Lingam, the Lord, the sacred Lord in front of you. And in India, when you put your feet into the direction of the altar of the divinity, or the feet on top, that's something really a sacred, like horrible thing to do. And Namdev sees this and thinks, what is he doing? This can't be my guru. He's even sleeping, this old man. This is horrible. In the temple you go to pr 
pray not to sleep. And isn't that right? I hope no one of you, of you is sleeping right now. And he goes there and says, wake up. And this old man opens his eyes and says, ah, you must be Namdev. And you were sent by the Lord, right? To, and I'm. he asked me to be a guru, right? And Namdev says, ah, this must be truly a saint. But he doesn't really understand. How can he put his feet on the symbol of God, on the Shiva Lingam? What are you doing? You have your feet on the Shiva Lingam. And the old man says, oh, please, do me a favor. I am uh, very old now. Can you help me to get my feet off the Shiva Lingam? And so he helps him to take his feet off. And another Shiva Lingam appears under his feet. And again, Namdev takes the feet of the Shiva Lingam, puts them to another place, and then another Shiva Lingam appears under his feet. And the saint says, Dear Namdev, can you tell me one direction where God is not? One place where God is not? And then he touches him and gives him a blessing, the blessing of the Guru. And Namdev's vision is opened wide and he sees that all these years he has adored, worshipped God in the temple in that form. But God is everywhere. And from then onwards he travels and goes and wherever he goes he sings to the Lord. He loves the Lord with all his heart, not only in the temple. And the story goes on because after a while he comes back to his old temple where he used to pray. And again, the Lord appears to him and says, I missed you, Namdev. Why don't you come anymore to the temple? You came every day and we talked. And Namdev smiles about the joyful play of God and says, Dear Lord, I have understood that I don't need to come visit you in the temple. You are everywhere. And I love you everywhere. And the Lord says, Now you have understood. This is the second level of the presence of God. When you go anywhere and you look beyond the things and see God everywhere, with so much love, because you love God, and it's lo the love that brings you to God. But then the great masters and the Indian scriptures and Yogananda, they speak about a third level of practicing the presence of God. What could that be? It has to do, not only people enter this stage, says Yogananda, who have reached the highest level of ecstasy and union with God, and it's called Nirbhikalpa Samadhi. And that's a state where the body doesn't breathe anymore. There's no heartbeat, there's no thought, the body is still. And in that state, the soul perceives something more. And now I really need your attention in order to attune with what they see. It's not that they see God beyond, behind. There is no behind. It doesn't exist. Nothing else exists than God. In the Indian scriptures, it's called Ekamsat. Only one exists. And Yogananda describes him like this in the autobiography of a yogi. Ekamsat, the scripture says, only one exists. Only the one who entered Nirbhikalpa Samadhi can say from the depth of realization, Ekamsat, only one exists. What's the difference with the other stage?
the one before said, I see this apple, but behind it is the presence of God, beyond. I see a cup, and behind is the presence of God. I see a candle, but I don't see only a candle. I see behind it the presence of God. That's the second level. The third level, I see God. I don't see God behind the cup. I see God here, and I see God here. And I want to help you understand this a little better. Please sit upright, close your eyes, and try to visualize what these great masters explain. Look towards the spiritual eye and visualize a sea of consciousness without form. God, Satchit Ananda, the absolute God, absolute bliss, consciousness. And now this ocean of consciousness, try to see that it becomes form, concrete, form. It becomes nature. God is not behind nature. God is nature. Try to visualize your parents, your children. You don't see God behind, beyond them, but God became them. God became everything. In all the world, God there's God's existence wherever you watch. It's an illusion to think that you see a person, you are seeing God. You're seeing a flower, you see God. That's the magic. Nothing exists around you but God. And that's the truth. the great masters teach us. Try to think about the people surrounding you, left and right, who follows from home. Think about your nearest person. Try to think of this person and don't think there is a person. That is the magic of the third level. Try to visualize this ocean of God that is manifesting, that is becoming the person next to you. And now look at that person, if there is a person next to you, at home or here in the temple, try to look at a person at your left or at your right, and try to say to this person inwardly, Hello God, I love you. You don't see a person there, that's God in front of you, left and right to you. The, that's what the scriptures say. The person doesn't know that he's God, but for you, God has become concrete, manifested itself. That's how you practice the third level of practicing the presence of God. Yogi Bhajan, a great Indian master, from the Kundalini Yoga tradition said, and I first say this in English, you can reopen your eyes. If you can't see God in all, you can't see God at all. This means if you can't see God in all, you can't see God at all. It's a bit more playful in English. Try to look again at the person, at the people around you, and try to see God. Yogananda says, seeing God in the other is a glorious thing. The Guru sees only God in the various human forms, and he can never think that someone is less than God. When one of these great masters in Nirvikalpa Samadhi sees you, he sees God. He doesn't see 
you like you perceive yourself. And he can never think that anyone could be less than God. You are God. And that's what the great masters see. He doesn't see God behind you. He sees God who has manifested in you. I want to say something similar to what Swami Kriyananda said in the lecture before. He said, if you live like this, it opens the door to thousands of opportunities of service, service to God. When you see people in need, the great yogis don't serve people, they serve God because they see God there. Do you remember the Biblic story from before? Yes or no? That the king, written in capital letters because he, symbolized, he symbolizes God, says the one who is the one who gave me to eat, gave me to drink, clothed me, visited me in prison, Anyone who's, who served one of these needy people served me because I am in them. And if you see in this moment a person in need, try to think magic. In, the, in truth, even if you don't realize it deeply, and even if that person doesn't realize it really deeply, the person is God itself in front of you. And if you give this person something to eat, you help, you give him something, you are serving God himself. That's the truth that our eyes can't see. But the masters say, it's like that. This person doesn't exist. It's God in front of your eyes and you're serving God. There's a beautiful story about this that Yogananda tried to explain, but it's not easy to explain and to see God really everywhere. Once the master was not well, he had a knee problem. When I say master, I, I mean Paramahansa Yogananda in our case. So he had a knee problem and he wanted to go uh, with his car somewhere and he went out of the car and had problem getting back into the car and the disciples lovingly helped the master to go back into the car. Yogananda didn't um, ride the car, he had um, someone and so the disciples helped him to get into the back of the car or into the car and he observed them and said you are all so gentle to me with all your attentions and the disciples said oh sir we are answering to your intelligence and the master smiles and says God helps God God is helping God that is his drama and you don't see it the masters see it but do know that if you help someone, in truth you are helping God. And the more you do it with love, the more the presence of God is near. Because what attracts the presence of God is love. Let's think of a person or of people who maybe disturb you, who do who do strange things, who are not behaving well or are behaving stupidly, in your opinion. Or maybe even doing terrible things. Or think things that you could never think. And you, you would think, how is this possible? So now think again about the magic of the third level. And try to see the absolute God without form manifesting taking the form of this, what you say, stupid person, maybe disturbing person, maybe irritating 
person tried to think that there is not this person, this is God Himself who took this form for you to teach you something. It's not that person, it's God in front of you and He's acting this way because I need to understand something. What do I need to learn? Maybe patience, maybe love, maybe wisdom, maybe opening up, being tolerant, being calm. I don't know. But try to think like this. The disturbing people around us is our God Himself to teach us something. And you are practicing this third level. And I told you, I try to bring you very up in these levels. And it's not easy. And when you think about a person who's really upsetting you, maybe even giving you a stomach ache, trying to think, this is God teaching me something, think about the magic of the third level of practicing the presence of God. Try to think. And I'll tell you also Yogananda's words, because these are not mine, they are Yogananda's. See God in all, like I see Him. Because Yogananda sees Him. You would try to see, to see God, but the masters really see God in the other people. Here comes that, only one exists. Like I see Him. Don't ridiculize a person who makes a mistake. God is sleeping in that soul. You need to wake him up with love. Put yourself mentally in his position and then with the maximum gentleness you are able to understand this person and help him. There is no greater joy. Let's try to think of a person who has a great success, who has, who has succeeded in doing something wonderful, the magic of the third level. Try to see God, absolute God, without form, becoming that person who's thinking to be that person, but it's not, it's God in front of you. And you say, hello God, I love you also in that form, because it's love that attracts the presence of God. Swami Kriyananda says like this, because now if we applause and we say, you are so great, you are wonderful, that's not good because you're stimulating the ego. Kriyananda says, give praise, but with calmness, because we don't want to develop too much ego in the other person. Think of God and give praise to God. I said in Yogananda's words, express your praise with sincerity, but discreetly. Don't try praise God in the others, but not their ego, because as a friend, you should always sustain them to reach spiritual heights. If you say, you are so great, wonderful, bravo, you're stimulating the ego. But if you see God in the other and say, well done, that is helpful. Uh, Swami Kriyananda said this. Now think of a person that you love. Now, the magic of the third level. It's not that person. Think again of this ocean, Satchitananda, absolute God, divine, who becomes a form and becomes that person. And you love in a different way. You say, hello, God, I love you. I love you in this person. What they teach us here is to love, yes, but not too personally, to love God in that form. And this form will dissolve one day. So try to impersonally love God in that person. 
because this God here will dissolve one day this form, but the Absolute God will not. I read you the words of Yogananda. In our love for other people, it's better to give them always an impersonal love, seeing God in all. Try. It's not easy. But try to see God in this person. Because it's like that. If the masters say the truth, Ekam Sat, only one exists. In front of you there is God, nothing else. And you love God. That's the magic of the third level of practicing the presence of God. And it's the most wonderful thing. Your impersonality should be without personal interest. That's difficult to love like that. Swami Kriyananda adds, try to see God in all and love Him in all. Open your eyes. Yogananda has a chant that in, um, in Italian it's not so well known, in English, yes. I will sing it to you in Italian. And it's from a great saint. It talks about a great saint who achieved this level, Aramprashat. Aramprashat Sen, and he was a devotee of Mother Kali. The song is from him. And he entered ecstasy, and he saw Divine Mother everywhere. And Yogananda sings this song of him. The words are, in every Veda there's Divine Mother. Divine Mother is everywhere. Blind eyes, search for your mother. She's hiding everywhere. Try to see nature like this. Swami Kriyananda said, Saint Francis didn't love nature like we think. He saw God in nature. That's different. Try to see the great absolute God manifesting in nature and you see God there. In front of your eyes you don't see a tree, a flower, a, a river. You see God. That's how the Masters see it. Yogananda says a flower is the smile of God. And in that flower I see God, in his petals I see his life, in the, in the trees and in his leaves. Now I want to take you to something more difficult, an enemy you have in life. Try to think of a person who doesn't like you, who wants to hurt you, or who maybe already hurt you. Now think. This person doesn't exist. Only God exists. Who wants to teach you something? God is in this enemy. How do you do this? How do you deal with this God in your life? Maybe you need to defend yourself. You cannot become a victim. Maybe you need to talk loudly, defend yourself. It's also correct sometimes to go to war, Yogananda says, to defend something. Do it with the thought that even in those brothers and sisters is God. God acts like that. Maybe there's a lesson. Maybe I need to learn to get out my courage, my weapons. Maybe I need to learn to defend myself, to understand with whom I share my life. Maybe I made a mistake to be in this situation. 
And God is there in your life through this enemy. And try to see God also there. And if you succeed to do what Jesus says, love your enemy. But Jesus didn't want to say love your enemy. He says love God in your enemy. God is there. Swami Kirananda says God is in the worst mafiosi. There's God in that person. You need to defend yourself. For example, mafiosis, they really need to be in prison, but not with hate, because it's the right thing to do. God is there too, and we cannot give power into the hands of a criminal. We need to do the right thing, but within, with clear eyes, with the eyes of a saint, seeing God in front of you. I don't want to bore you with always the same things, but we can bring this in all the aspects of our life, in the difficulties, in pain. Try to feel it's God getting to you through those things. God comes to you through pain, through difficulties, through physical pain, through emotional pain, hurting you very much. Try to see to feel that's God too. Ekam Sat, only one exists. God is in that. What do I need to learn? It's God and only God exists. And what do I do? For example, Kyanamata says, she's the most advanced disciple of Yogananda. Difficulties develop the steel of the muscles of our soul. If we had never anything painful or alarming to face, if everything was only in joy of God, what would we be? Spiritual cream puffs we would be. It's these very soft, um, sweet things. So we would be very soft, sweet people without the steel of the soul. And I would like to end with something even more difficult. The wrong in the world. That's God too. And Yogananda says it is necessary. There's a very important story in India which about Pralad, but I will not tell it to you. He is the son of a demon called Hiranyakashipu, and the father is a demon. I'm not going to tell you why a demon has a saintly son. I'm not going to tell you the whole story. Anyway, the son is a devotee of Krishna, <coughs> who is also called Narayan. And he sees Narayan everywhere. And the father hates Narayan, and he gets really angry. He hates Vishnu. It's his enemy. And he sees his own son worshipping, and he wants to kill his own son. <coughs> in many different ways, with poison, elephants crushing him, crushing the sun. But every time Pralat says, Om, I only see God, the miracle of God and all. And miraculously, he was saved by every time his father wanted to kill him. In the end, the father is so angry in his palace and says, and this column, you say God is also, Narayan is also in this column of this palace. And I hope to remember well, he takes this column of the palace and destroys everything where God should be. And Pralat says, yes, and out of this column, Narayan comes in the name of Vishnu. 
he comes out of the action of the demon and Yuananda says God has come in this case because of the a bad thing that happened so God takes this form to be born within us the wrong in the world is needed as to be to make God born within us as a reaction so that in the end the good can win the soul that is God so also the wrong and the <coughs> that thing that you see in the world is God it's God getting into this world through the wrong through the pain that's God's too and you need to understand how to see it how to react what do you need to learn that you become aggressive that you act on the same level I don't think so what does God want to teach you through the wrong in this world that's the third level of practicing the presence of God I admit it's difficult think about it and try to practice Ekamsat only one exists only God in the good and in the bad only God and everything has a sense also the bad things God comes to you through many forms and many situations I want to finish with one last thing I don't know if some of you read the inspirations on Facebook of Yogananda Edizioni today there was a very nice saying that brings us to the presence of God the Christ within me will see the Christ in all men I don't see anything else but him who is on the altar of wisdom in all mankind this third level if you apply it to yourself it becomes magical you are not you Ekamsat, only one exists only in, also in you only God exists you don't know it yet but sooner or later you will awaken to this thought that you are God alone and the result Yogananda says is peace will come when we learn to see God in all Namaste.